Hello everybody and welcome to episode 199 of the Next Gen Basecast. I am Ben and this week I'm joined by Andy. How are you doing? Hello, I'm alright, thank you very much. Good stuff. Um, I'm joined by Mr. Gary Clark. Are you well, friend? I am good. How are you? Yeah, not not bad. It's it's been it's been a week, and I'm also joined by uh, been Mr. a week. Yeah, as indeed, it's crazy stuff. Uh, I'm also joined by Mr. Aaron Sullivan. How you doing, my good man? What's good, my friend? You're a bit paler this uh, week, is it? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, you know, since he's uh, unfortunately, we've uh, you know we did have to say uh, we did have to bid us him uh, farewell once again. He's he's got himself a, a job in the industry again, but uh, yeah, you know. Um, Fair play. He's uh, he seems to be happy and settling well. So I, I'm pleased that you know there was some sort of uh, you know slight mistaken identity there because you know I am I am twice the man Asim is uh, you know literally <laughs> at this point. So, um, but as always, uh, we'll start with what we've been playing, and I'm going to leave Aaron to the last because it will actually tie quite nicely into our first news article. Um, which we can, you know, discuss at length. But, Gary, what have you been playing? So, I've been playing a bit of Horizon again. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be honest, it's good, but I just don't give a crap about it, to be honest. Um, <laughs> which is odd, because I love, like I said before, I love the first game. I just think I'm just bored with the whole world. I mm -hmm. don't know. It's, something's just not clicking with it. Um okay beautiful looking game i've gone over this before but i just i don't know what it is i just can't get into it mm. um i don't know if it's just the characters or it's the world itself or it's open world games in general um yeah i've been playing a bit of that um apart from that i've been playing mainly stuff with my like nephews i've been playing i'm a bit well i'm not a bit i'm late to the to playing this but i am fish um which okay. is i think you guys i think you've played it ben right I can't say that I have. It's not. Okay. It's not ringing so any bells. Um, Is that I am I'm sure fish some of... or iron fish? I am fish. Yeah. I am. I thought you said iron fish. I thought, is this some kind of superhero <laughs> <laughs> underwater superhero? Some new Robocod game that I'm not aware of. Some sort of Marvel. <laughs> um, ripper. Yes, it's. It's actually quite fun, actually. It's, I'm surprised. Um, I was half expecting like Disney's lawyers to pop up halfway through playing it because it's <laughs> basically Finding Nemo. Right. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's um, that's good fun. It's sort of like a puzzle-based game as a fish in a like bowl. Okay. Um, it's quite cool. Um, I've also been playing some weird games with them. That like, they're into like these weird sort of quirky games. One called Wobbly World. I don't know if you've heard of that. <laughs> um so it's basically like grand theft auto for kids without the guns um, <laughs> wow. which is quite interesting and one that ben would probably be into maybe is called i can't even remember what it's called trail makers that's the one um okay so it is basically i think lego meets minecraft meets uh, um lego meets minecraft meets no man's sky um essentially okay. it's sort of like you can build like vehicles and stuff like that and then you're in like this sort of open semi-open world um i sort of watched them playing it more than me playing it but i sort of had a sort of little go on it and it's it's interesting um that's on that and i am fish is also on game pass so they were just like okay. downloads quickly and just have a quick check out of them so um apart from that i believe more than horizon <laughs> uh no so i do, when i play horizon i do enjoy it but i just struggle to sort of stay with it um yeah i i don't know it's just something just not clicking for me i think Fair i'm enough. hoping that i'm going to go back to it in a couple of months and go right i get it now but at the moment i just yeah i just don't really care for it too much um so yeah, apart from those, I think that is it. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Cool. Um, what about yourself, Mr. Beacon? Um, I've been playing this little indie game um, called Elden Ring. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's, uh, it's this sort of little um, kind of a double A title, I guess, really. Um, I've been playing a fair bit of that since that launched and, and I've sunk quite a few hours into that. But I have actually popped it on the shelf 
because it was becoming a little bit all-consuming, so I've had to go cold turkey on it and try and play some other games. So um, I fired up Deathloop for the first time hey. um, the other day, which was great when I finally got around to being able to play it because there was a glitch in my install. Because So I got Deathloop for Christmas, and I did a thing on Christmas Day while we were cooking christmas dinner where it was like oh i'm just going to install all my new games on my consoles and then when i finally get around to playing them i won't have to install them apparently if you install Deathloop and it downloads the patch for it but it installs the patch before it installs the actual game it knackers the installation so i had to uninstall it and install it before i could actually play it that's amazing it was it was mad. I had to Google it, but I was like, I popped the disc in, tried to fire the game up, and it was like, eh. my PlayStation was just like, no, no, mate, not having it. So I had to Google that, but no, it seems all right. I've only done the the first kind of area um, so far. The um, what's the first area called? Uh, I... Where you have to get back to your apartment. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called, but I know. What yeah, you... that's sort of yeah, yeah. So I've done that, and um, I keep meaning to come back to it, but. I kind of got sidetracked because the day after I started playing Deathloop, Tunic came out and hit Game Pass mm. um, straight away. So I kind of jumped on that and I've been playing it since it came out. And I've kind of... You've seen the messages that me <laughs> and Kieran have been having on our chat. Yeah. And we've got this kind of love-hate relationship with it. I kind of like Tunic. I really visually love it and it does some really smart things. But I feel like it's a little bit... It needed a bit of tuning under the hood because it's one of these games that hides under its Zelda-like cutesy veneer a um, a hard game. We're going to be a Nintendo hard, I think is what the developer was saying. Right. Um, and kind of going, angling towards this kind of Dark Souls-style uh, combat system. Um, but forgetting that Dark Souls, and I, you're going to disagree with me on this, Dark Souls does actually have a balanced combat system. And I know you're disagreeing with me on that very firmly, Ben. Um, but those kind of games do have like um, a degree of balance to them in the way that they kind of let you play the way you want to play. So, you know, you're not funneled down a very specific route. And the problem with Tunic is you're funneled down a very specific route. It's kind of like Sekiro was. And that means that you, it, your progress is entirely tied to your ability to actually overcome every single obstacle right. in the way that the game wants you to overcome it, rather than, you know, like, oh, I'm stuck on this boss, I'm going to go over here and check this out. Like you've been doing with Elden Ring. Mm. You know, I'm going to go and check this, this little bit of the world out and kind of explore there, level up a bit, come back maybe a bit tougher. Tunic doesn't let you do that, so you do hit hard walls where it's like, well, if you can't get past this boss... That's your time with the game up, sir. Right. Um, okay. And I've kind of hit that at the minute. And it's kind of frustrating because I really like it and I really want to progress on it. But it's come to a point where my old man skills seem to be um, <laughs> failing me. My old man lack of reflexes seems is there, to be uh, Is there no easy mode? Me. There is an easy mode. I am not turning it on. I'm not some filthy casual Benjamin. <laughs> filthy. Filthy um, casuals. But, there is there is an easy mode. Uh, I think part of me see, it feels like I kind of want to overcome it because, but yeah, I don't know. I really like it, but it's really pissing me off at the same time. Spoken um, like a, a shame, true fanboy of the Souls series there. <laughs> There's an easy mode. I'm not going to use it, but I'm pissed off with it anyway. <laughs> well, the easy mode basically removes stamina, which I kind of feel like it, I might go for because I feel like the stamina management in the game is slightly broken. It's got these really fast bosses, but your character moves very slowly and has very slow stamina regen. So I feel like I'm constantly fighting against the speed that my character's moving versus these kind of really aggressive, fast attacks from the bosses. And that that's kind of... It, it feels like there's a bit of an imbalance there. It's like it's hard for the sake of being hard rather than hard to be a challenge. Hmm. No. No. <laughs> okay. They're not like that, Ben. No. They're good but, games. But it does have a cute fox in it. It does have a cute fox mm. in it. Um, what else have I been playing? So just before that? you move on, right, are we all kind of in the same boat here that we all saw something somewhere that said that this game was coming to Game Pass a long time ago? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. 
Yeah, there was an announcement that it was going to come day one to Game Pass Tunic, but the developer then went on record saying, no, it's not coming to Game Pass. Yeah. And then it came to Game Pass. Because I I distinctly remember seeing that and like, I was thinking, oh, cool. Yeah, Tunic's coming to Game Pass. I'll I'll play that when it's out. And then the release date got announced and there was no mention of Game Pass at all. Yeah. And then it like the day before it came out, it was like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're coming to Game Pass. I was like, I'm right. pretty sure it was announced during some kind of showcase, some kind of Microsoft mm. indie showcase. So some kind of idea Xbox um, video had it as coming to Game Pass on day one, but it kind of then went quiet and then just yeah. stealth dropped on Game Pass. Am I, um, am I thinking that, of a different I, game yeah. here? But was there a demo of this at some point? I think there was, um, if I remember right. I was, because yeah, they, they put yeah. out a bunch of demos all at once, didn't they? Um, mm, yes, I think there was. I don't know if Tunic was. I I seem to think there was, but I, I'm. Now you've said that you're getting confused with something else. I think it, you might be getting confused with another game that's got a similar title whose name escapes mm. me, but it's all like set in desert and you jump on like a little speeder bike that you made. Um, I can't remember to be honest, but that's been on Game Pass, and I can't for the life of me remember, yes. but it was it was really janky when I played it. Yeah, it it was, was really... On my Series X, it was a bit framey and horrible, so I stopped playing it. Indeed. Anything else, Andy? Um, yeah, I, be, I started playing a little bit of Shredders at hmm. the weekend, and that's not the baddie from yeah. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's the <laughs> snowboarding game that's just dropped onto a Game Pass, and that's pretty good fun. Um, it's a little bit unpolished in places. It kind of feels like... Um, uh, steep but built with off the shelf Unity assets. Um, <laughs> yeah. But that's not a negative thing because actually the snowboarding in it is really good. Mm. Um, the story is a bit daft, yep. um, but the snowboarding is actually quite good. Once you get into it and actually start playing with it, it, it feels like it's trying to do for snowboarding what skate did for um, uh, skateboarding. And be sort of slightly more realistic. You know, you're not doing crazy grinds everywhere like you do in SSX. You know, when, you, when you're when you grinding a rail, you have to sort of angle your board onto it and sort of, you know, yeah, yeah. try and keep your back. It, it's, it's a pretty decent snowboarding game. Um, once you get past the slight level of jank and the, um, the, the very, very silly and badly acted story. But it's, it's well worth p- playing on, on Game Pass. It's, uh, it's quite a good fun bit if you if you're hankering for some snowboarding. Yeah. Um, I other have, than that, by the way, uh, uh, just checked and there was a demo for Tunic last summer. Ah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. So I did I did play it. Yeah, I thought I did, but good stuff. You um... weren't hallucinating. <laughs> um, Could but... have swore like you know you get deja vu and I'm just like I'm sure I played this before, but yeah, <laughs> there we go. Um, but I, I have also been playing some shredders, um, and yeah, it's it's decent. I mean, I I was I saw it initially. I was like, is this going to be kind of like SSX, or is it going to be a bit more like um, like you say steep? Um, it is very much in the steep kind of. Yeah, I was right? just hoping it wasn't going to be like Skatebird. Well, if I'm honest, because that got me very excited and was yeah. terrible. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, it's it's decent. Like I think I like the um, some of the control methods are pretty good. Um, I I'm sort of leaning into the daftness of the story at the moment. Like there is a there's a definite element of like this this is just stupid. Um, there's one brilliant bit where they're talking about like uh, that apparently there's this famous snowboarder that comes up and he says like oh how come you've got like a big face mask on and like a big you know a, and a silly hat and he just goes because yeah, the developers can't be asked to code it properly. So he's just the, like, the developers ran out of money. I think that's it. Yeah. So it's basically <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, the devs are, the devs run out of money, so they can't actually provide a fully animated model. It's like, yeah, all right, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> it does a bit of fourth wall breaking, doesn't it? Yeah. So, but now that's fun. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of obviously from an indie studio. Like some of the menus are very simplistic, but um, mm. you know, once you get sort of on the mountain and, and snowboard a bit, it's good fun. Um, mm. but the main one that I've been playing. Uh, that I'm allow- now allowed to talk about is uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, um, which the review Reviews is on the site, site now. Yeah, the review is on the site and uh, on the YouTube channel and done a technical video for that as well. And I like it in spite of itself. <laughs> I think, I think, that's, the general, I think that's the general consensus, isn't it? Is it's 
it's kind of fine. Yeah, like it's <laughs> if if you were to base the, a review on just aesthetic and world building and like kind of technical flair, this game would be getting tens across the board. But there's a point at which you kind of think, okay, right, I've done the same style of combat now for the past six or seven hours since the tutorial, like when's it going to evolve? And it never really does. So the combat is is pretty stilted all the way through. Um, I managed to wrap it up in about 12 hours, which I was very surprised by for a uh, an open world game. Um, and there's like that kind of... When you see the map, the, you know, there's, the map kind of just gets dotted with loads of these different icons and you think, oh, this is going to be a Ubisoft kind of open world game. And it, the, the fear is there, but it's not realized because, you know, there's just a lot of stuff um, that you you don't have to do. Um, if you are a completionist, this game will take you forever because um, you'll have to collect every single soul that's been left behind by the citizens of Tokyo. And there are 200,000 of them. <laughs> that's a lot yeah i mean like yeah. to be fair like when you, you use your little katashiro thing which is like a little paper doll when you hold it up it does absorb like about 100 to a thousand at a time so it's not quite as bad but yeah like there's there's a lot of stuff to get there um but no like yeah i i really enjoyed kind of the story of it i thought the story was um very it had the potential to be very by the numbers, but I think there was a few bits in there that kind of get thrown in. And you think, oh, this is this is pretty cool. You know, it's, it, intriguing was the the word that we used a little bit in our uh, let's look at the preview that we did, um, yeah. and it definitely stays on that kind of you know the intriguing level. Um, what I think one of the most interesting things for me about it was like the the, the technical side because the, the game's got six performance modes. You've got, yeah. I'm looking at Gary's reaction. I'm saying, yeah, that's about right. So you've got standard. Is it a bit overkill? Yeah, well, kind of, and it, it actually links into something that's that we're going to talk about in a little while. But the first, like, you've got a standard performance and a standard quality mode. Then you have four high frame rate versions. So you have high frame rate quality, high frame rate performance, and then you've got high. Uh, high frame rate quality with vsync enabled and high frame rate performance with vsync enabled so if you want that kind of steady 60 frames a second regardless of whatever it is you're playing then the hang on high frame rate performance vsync mode is probably the best one but you start to notice things in the world like the the game's got ray trace reflections and when you notice the difference between like the ray trace reflections and the screen space reflections, when you, you sort of lift your head and you, the, the source disappears from the screen, when you notice like the, the, the layer of like the map, uh, the cube map just coming in and it like just gets rid of all the detail on the floor, you're like, oh, I want the ray tracing back. Um, so like, yeah, you, you, I, I played through 90% of the game with the high frame rate quality V-Sync mode on. Um, I did try the, the the ones without VSync on, but Jesus Christ, there is a lot of screen tearing in that game if you try those modes. So don't use mm. them just yet. Is is the quest, is the uh, the recommendation on that? But uh, to be continued. Yeah, um, but no, it's it's a decent game. I I enjoyed it. I gave it an eight out of ten. Um, as I said, if you're expecting kind of a fluid combat simulator, it's it's not quite that, but. The story reminded me a lot of Control and like how weird all that stuff was, and I fucking loved Control. So you know, I I, I kind of like this one, um, but as I say, a little bit in spite of itself. So, um, but they are, I think, the two games that I've been playing. So we'll move on to Aaron, and uh, I think you've basically been uh, mainlining one game still. I've not been as adventurous as you guys. I've <laughs> still been playing GT7. I've went for my little journey through this game. I um, started off with the cafe like everybody else has done. I was like, okay, this is cool. I was enjoying it, unlocking the cars, getting to know the tracks. It goes on for a slightly bit too long, and you're kind of like, okay, enough of this cafe stuff. Let me do what I want to do. Um, of course, the game doesn't stop you from doing what you want to do, but because I'm like that 
I got that completionist mindset. I'm like, <laughs> I gotta finish this. I gotta get done with it. Um, so finish with that. Um, and then you kind of come to the realization that there isn't much content after that. <clears throat> so you either you either need to go and do the rest of the licenses, which obviously I enjoyed again as a completionist. I was like competing with them and Rich and all the other guys. Um, but outside that and the missions and sport mode, which might not be for everybody because it's a little try hardy, um, there's actually not much content. So once you're done with that, you're kind of just like, mm, okay, what do I do next? Um, I obviously went on to sport. Um, the problem with that is you only get three races a day. Oh, wow. So once you've, once you've really? done, not, not three races a day, so my bad, even worse than that, three races a week. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So there's only three races, um, race A, B, and C. Um, why, why do they restrict it like that? Why, what, what's the, um, the kind of, the, have, the incentive? I have no oh, idea. Wow. I guess to get, giving people enough time to actually participate in it. So you can do it as many times as you want, um, but you are restricted to those three in terms of like right, uh, right, escalating okay. up the rankings in, in sport mode. Oh, right. So it's like a rank. Yeah. It's like a rank. Yeah. 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 Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, they've recently like introduced, uh, one of the leagues they're testing for the leagues. So it's basically the same race every, every day for the next like four days. I think we've done two days already. Um, so you, you have to kind of like pre sign up for those, which is kind of, it's kind of awkward because as we all know, the Japanese don't do online very well. So when I tried to do it, it kind of was like, oh, pick a time, PS4, PS5 crash, try it again, pick a time, PS5 crash. Try again. It comes up. Sorry, you've run out of time. Oh, you can't participate mate. in. <laughs> so, so you know, it's, it's kind of, kind of awkward there. But saying all that, the game is still a great game in terms of just cars, racing, and if you're you've got to drive to like improve and want to be better, it's great. Um, it's just it's got these little niggly things, and I'm sure we're about to talk about the whole microtransaction part of it very soon. But yeah, that's my game. There we go. I mean, like, yeah, I think it, it seems to be a lot of the, the conversation which, you know, does lead us nicely into the first main story of this week's podcast, which is the whole controversy shebang around Gran Turismo 7. Um, so I want to get the timeline on this right. So there was a bit of backlash where people were saying that, like, the... Um, some of the exotic cars were, were very expensive and the races were very grindy. There was then some server maintenance that took the de the entire game down for over a day, I think it was. <coughs> and then when it came back up, people found that um, there were certain races that then had the amount of credits nixed or sort of dropped quite considerably. Um, and then the producer on the game sort of came out and said, well, yeah, these cars are expensive in real life, so they're going to be expensive in the game. Like, you need to kind of work really? at it. But that's then led to people kind of um, coming up with little mods and, like, ways of, of earning credits without actually playing the game. And it it, it just sounds really messy. I mean, as someone that's kind of been deep into it aaron how, how have you seen this entire shit show play out so in terms of like reducing the prices of the money you get from from races i'm kind of i need to know why they did it i think that's the biggest problem right most they didn't tell you tell people why they, so people have just been left to their own devices mm -hmm. is this because of my microtransactions and then if you follow that up with the, the fact that they introduce the microtransactions after the reviews come out and it just looks bad. If you just come out and yeah. say, we've done this for this yeah. gameplay reason because we want you to, I don't know, continue. we want to keep the economy balanced or whatever, yeah. just come out and say what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, so in regards to that, it doesn't look good, but it could have been done for a good reason. Again, they just need to speak up. Um, in regards to the offline thing, that's the most annoying thing for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, You've got to give people ways to play your game. Now, I don't know if that's been done because they don't have a good way of policing 
like hackers and stuff. So the best way to combat, the easiest way to combat it is just to have it online all the time so you can instantly react to it. Um, I don't know if that's good enough for a lot of people in this modern day and age. You know, they kind of need to step into the current day. But I also understand if you don't have the tech, this is how you're going to go about it. And you kind of have to just make the decision for yourself whether, whether that's worth it. I'd also say that we live in a day and age where if you don't really have internet to play your game, you're kind of you're kind of fucked, really, aren't you? Like it's not just this game. Yeah, I mean, like the, there was a big, big conversation around um, like Hitman and Hitman Two and Hitman Three. You need to be online to progress properly in those games, um, and it's a similar situation here, where obviously, you know, Gran Turismo primarily is a single player game it obviously has a multiplayer element but you need to be online and i think for most people like it's not too much of an issue to be online because you'll be getting the latest version of the game you'll be getting this, you know all the patches you'll be able to like if you want to do multiplayer you can do but it, it's just a, think, it's a bit of a mess isn't it go on andy i think it's it's one thing sort of saying you know everyone's got internet and everyone generally has got access to some kind of internet but i think making on being online a requirement to actually play certain parts or like you're saying hitman progress specific things is kind of a negative thing these these games which have single player elements if your internet goes down for a while that's your gaming session naft if that was the game you were playing mm. then all of a sudden Oh, okay. Well, I can't get my Gran Turismo in tonight, or I can't play what I wanted to. And I, I gather it was some of the single player parts of the game that were locked out where the entire where game the servers were down. The it's pretty game. much everything. You had like oh, access well, to a go. select so, amount of courses and yeah. a select amount of cars in addition to whatever cars you had unlocked at that point. So you could mm -hmm. use all the cars you had unlocked and, right, and bought yeah. at that point in addition think, to whatever baseline cars yeah. they. I yeah. think you lose a lot of goodwill um, from your players when you do that kind of thing to a single player game. You know, if it's something like Fortnite, if someone going on to Fortnite and expecting to be able to play that when their internet's, when Virgin Media's had a little hiccup. I think um, for you example, say that. The, 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 is, I just yeah. want to interrupt there. The, the big difference here isn't that like Aaron's internet was down or like my oh, internet no, no, was no. down if I was playing, but this yeah. is, this is the other end. This is like, Oh, I know. I know that's, it, it's the kind of more reliable for want of a better phrase. Like it's yeah. the more reliable side it, of the bargain. What I'm saying is it works both ways though, isn't mm. it? If you, if you hinge this online requirement into a game that has single player content and that's not like an online component, like say, I don't know, um, something like Dark Souls, where you could go and play that. That's only the example that came to my brain, Benjamin. I'm not obsessed, don't worry. Um, not saying where you can play that entirely offline as a single-player game. It's like, regardless of whether it's your internet or whether it's a problem with the game's service, mm. if there is that barrier that's present preventing you from playing the game, then you're tied into a very shaky infrastructure for a game that you should just be able to go, I'm going to just twat around um, Luna Sec Lu the Guna Seca for a bit. Mm. Um, you can't do mm. that because either your internet or the servers are down. Mm. I mean, Gary... But as I said, there is something to be said for like maintaining the integrity of the game. Like It's very easy like to kind of... I guess there should be a middle ground, right? It's very easy to cheat in, in some of these games. So, like... yeah. People are hacking things all the time. So in, in order yeah. to maintain the integrity, having always online so you can react to it, mm. great. But I also understand what you're saying in terms of maybe at least make the cafe part of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still playable while, you know, the servers are done. It's I mean, a tricky one. Yeah, I do, I do agree with you because I remember um, hacking, not necessarily hacking, but using a bit of an action replay kind of thing on GT3 on my PS2 to um, get ridiculous amounts of credits to advance the cars. Yeah. You know, it's a thing. And I guess if you've got that online component in it, you want to try and balance it out. But yeah, tricky one. I mean, Gary, what's your uh, what's your thoughts on this? Is it putting you off getting GT7 or? Uh, it's not putting me off per se, but I've seen people online saying like, oh, there's nothing wrong with this whole, 
you've got to be online all the time thing, but are they the same people that give Microsoft shit the original Xbox One debacle? Like, you can't have it both ways. Um, so, yeah, it's not putting me off play, it, but some of the other stuff is, like, the whole microtransaction stuff. Like, is there, like, one car you have to put in, like, 380 hours or something to get this one car? I did see so, that, yeah. The weird thing about really? my question... My question about the uh, the whole everybody complaining about the microtransaction thing, it's obviously a bad thing. We all hate microtransactions, period. But that being said, if you go through the single player experience, which is the cafe for this game, you end up with like close to 4 million credits. So you pretty much can just buy whatever you want for the most part, except for this super exotic cars. Now, it depends on what type of gamer you are. Like... Mo I don't think most people are, though, are using those cars to go and do anything because there's not many single player races to do. You just be grinding the same single player race with that fancy car over and over again. That's quite boring. I don't, for me at least, I, I can't imagine anybody would derive much fun from that. The alternative to that is the sport mode. And as I've said, that's like heavily gated. Like you have to, there's race A, race B, and race C, and they all have different requirements you have to use a specific car sometimes you have to have specific things on your car you have to <clears throat> have it a specific weight so you won't be using any of these super fancy 20 million credit cars so like are people really complaining for a real reason or are they just jumping on because i hate microtransactions that's you know I think why this... are they in the game <laughs> if no one's going to buy That's the them. issue, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think this are they are of... they there for the whales? <laughs> I mean, it kind of goes back to almost what we said when Forza Horizon Five came out, because one of my sort of little criticisms <clears throat> of that game was that it didn't feel like there was much progression because within mm. five minutes of it, you can you know be mm. in a supercar bombing through the desert, and it's like I think here there is the um you know there is the that feeling of progression but it's so grindy at that point that if you want to get the best cars you know you need to sink literal weeks of time into one doing sort of one race over and over again and it's like there's, there's got to be a middle ground somewhere um mm. i think the, I, the, I think go on no go on ben you carry on i was saying i think the, the problem for me is that the the, the, you know, like Aaron said, the, the, that nixing of credits, it seems to happen after the review period. And, yeah. you know, we've criticised companies that have done this before, and I know most recently um, Square Enix did it with the Chocobo racing game, where, you know, there was no microtransactions in the game during the review, and then the the, the reviews went live, the game, uh, the game came out publicly, and, oh, look, there's microtransactions in it now. And it's like that's really shady and i don't i almost think this is a bit worse where like you have a game that's being reviewed and you know we've got a review up that says you know 10 out of 10 and you know when we spoke to us and when he was doing the review he kind of said look it's the, the microtransaction stuff isn't really a problem because they're just throwing credits at you in this game so like if that has been dramatically altered that's a shady mm. move yeah, I think the moral of the story is that these companies need to stop trying to pull one under over people. Like, just be upfront, and if people love your game enough, they'll generally overlook mm. things like microtransactions to a degree. Do you, do you know what I mean? As long as they're done upfront and they don't <sighs> hinder the game too much. If the game had come out with a bit more uh, after the, the cafe content. <laughs> and they had introduced these Michael trans transactions from the beginning. I don't think people would be complaining anywhere near as much as they are now. It's just, it's one of those things. Just be upfront. Stop trying to PR people. Stop trying to market people. Just be upfront. And yeah. people give, give people a chance to love your game. Yeah. And they will. Yeah, no, absolutely. Also, games are a fantasy, aren't they? They're about fantasy. They're about doing stuff you can't do. I saw one comment earlier saying, um, you know, I can't afford a Ferrari in real life. I don't want to pay 70 quid for a game where I can't afford a Ferrari as well. <laughs> this is a very deep <laughs> cut, but it's a it's a bit like that uh, the Red Dwarf episode where they all go into the better than life thing. And it's like, uh, Rimmer can't accept good things happening to him, so he fantasizes that you got eight kids and a mortgage. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, 
Yeah. Anyway, right, moving on. Um two two new games. Um and one of them is kind of a very brief story, but it's a very big game. So uh we've got a new Witcher game coming, guys. Mm. Ooh, ooh. Um they CD Project Red kind of tweeted out an image. Um and I did see what the animal was, but the, the badge uh, there was a badge in the snow. And I think Eurogamer have confirmed that it is not a wolf. It is a different kind of animal. A jackal, um, I think. It may it? be a jackal. It yeah. may be a jackal. Um, and yeah, they've they've not really put any screens out or anything like that. Just literally the, you know, the image of the medallion in the snow. Mm. And they said, we've got a new Witcher game coming. It kicks off a brand new saga. So it doesn't sound like we're going to have Geralt. Um, but... It's being made with Unreal 5 rather than CDPR's, uh, you know, proprietary engine. Red engine. Yeah. So, uh, Gary, you, you excited for, for more Witcher? Did you did you play The Witcher 3? Um, I actually didn't, no. Um, that is one game that I definitely need to get involved with because I know so many people, like you guys have said, how great it is. Um, yeah, this is going to be a while, I think. Um, yeah. So yeah. I've got plenty of time to sit down and smash out uh, The Witcher 3. But yeah, I sort of expected them to do another Witcher because obviously the whole Netflix stuff and it's sort of like that buzz about it um, at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite surprised that they're using the Unreal Engine 5 though because I assumed that they would just use the Red Engine and modify it for mm. that, um, upgrade it or whatever. But yeah, um, Unreal... The yeah, Unreal Five and Unreal Engine Five looks like ridiculous. So um, yeah, I can sort of understand why they did go with it. But um, yeah, I'm I will definitely check it out. But I need to sit down and play three first. <laughs> well, I have not played three either, Gary. So we're you know we're in good company. Uh, but I think if you start <laughs> The Witcher Three now, you might be able to potentially hundred percent it by the time the release gate a release date gets announced. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good luck finishing that game, mate. <laughs> I mean, Jesus it's like, Christ! It's frequently like the price of a Starbucks on on Steam, so you might as well just go and yeah, pick it's it up. Very true, there, actually. And, yeah, so um, uh, it's actually re- it plays really well on the Switch as well. Yeah, but sadly, this one won't be on the Switch because the Switch doesn't support UE five. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I do wonder if you said that, that they had. You said that in such a depressed way. It's like, well, that's fine. Like, well, that's fine. It's okay. It's whatever. Wait, <laughs> wait. Do we all? Do we all still believe we'll be using this version of the Switch by this time this game yeah. comes out? Oh, what? That's very true. That is very, very true. <laughs> that's, that's, I do wonder yeah. if the issues that they had with Cyberpunk maybe identified some problems in their tool chain, and they've just said, right, fine, Unreal Engine it is. <laughs> It doesn't. It doesn't speak volumes for their engine, does it? That they've no. No. jumped ship this quickly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Aaron, you excited for for more witching? I definitely am. I love The Witcher Two, and The Witcher Three is even better. I have confidence that they won't. Hopefully, please don't fuck this up. <laughs> um, um, I'm just like worried about the the story point because it looks like maybe, as you said, we won't have Geralt. Mm. Um, so I'm wondering if they'll actually join up with the the original author to get new content or what's the deal i've not actually read the book so but then the they have like an issue i, say, I th- the think games they... are actually sequels to the books okay so the oh, games okay. are set after the book series and after the netflix stuff which is based on the books the mm. game the first witcher game actually takes starts like several months after the final book in the book series right. so they are actually original mm. stories anyway Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, I know they had a. You mentioned there they had some issues. I think they had a big lawsuit as well at one point to kind of. Uh, I'm sure that the writer of the books was adamant that he was entitled to more royalties than he actually mm. got, but I don't really know how that ended. Um, I, I think he didn't expect it to pop off as well as it did, yeah. and he's like, "Oh yeah. fuck, yeah. I should have asked for more money." <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. Pretty much. Um, so, so yeah, we've got we've got. Potentially two out of four. Um, I, I, I'm probably going to say I won't check it out because I'm I'm frightened of those games and how much they would take over my life. Um, Andy, are you are you going to be witching it up? 
I will. I, I did play all three witches. I have not completed any of them, um, <laughs> but I have got all three of them in various different formats. Um, I think The Witcher 3 is definitely the most accessible of the trilogy. The first one is super janky when you go back and play it now. It's very much a PC game. Uh, the second one I liked, but it takes a really long time to get going and kind of feels like it. it, it it's one of these games that's got like a 50-hour prologue that takes forever to to get through so um it's Witcher one of those pretty, that... pretty short it's a pretty short game i mean when you compare yeah, it yeah. to the witcher 3 well, anyway yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah um but witcher 3 is 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 i feel like it's an evergreen game it's a game that i keep coming back to and like chipping away at and doing bits and bits at having it on my switch <laughs> tends to be like a holiday game like when i'm away out of my house for like an extended period of time it's the game that i tend to turn to to just sink a bunch of um hours into um it's good and i'm looking forward to the concept of a new witcher because i am a big fan of the books as well so you know more witch is always good um <laughs> always good so there we go good. um and uh, yeah the last sort of big reveal that we've got here um they announced a new Ghostbusters game. Mm. I was, I, I think we'd seen this teased, if I remember rightly. Um, I think Ernie Hudson dropped some hints, but uh, yeah. Is it called uh, Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed? Uh, coming to, I think, all platforms bar the Switch. Uh, where right, PC. <laughs> Yeah, PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Series X and S. So, uh, yeah, they, they kind of tweeted it, and um, I think the last game that I remember from them was Predator Hunting Grounds, which was was not particularly great. But um, they have also done, if I remember rightly, they've done the Texas Chainsaw game, or the, they're, they're developing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, or is that that's Saber, isn't it? Um, yeah. Believe so. Yeah, this is uh, Ilphonic, so it's not the same. Uh, it's not the same developer, but obviously it's kind of the same uh, premise in that it's four and one asynchronous multiplayer. Um, mm. I mean, you know, four and one multiplayer where you're playing as four hunters and you've got a a monster. It's it's bringing back memories of Evolve, isn't it, Andy? Yeah, yeah, very much Evolve. It's. Um... Yeah, I think it works. That concept works as a Ghostbusters game, definitely. I think it's it's got like a story element to it, though, hasn't it? Because, you know, you've got bits between missions in the firehouse. And I think, hasn't it got Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson actually voicing Ray and uh, Winston in it? Obviously, Bill Murray picked up his paycheck for um, Afterlife and then did one, <laughs> yeah. as Bill Murray is wont to do. Um, but, you know, it'd be interesting. Interesting to see uh, see where that goes. I'm not... Not always massively hot on kind of the online multiplayer games like that. So I hope it's got some something in it for people who don't necessarily want to get an, in and do the multiplayer aspect. So I hope it's got some missions that you can play with AI or something like that. I doubt it will, but, you know, it'll be interesting to see if it does. Mm. Um, but, yeah, could be interesting. They did Friday the 13th, the game, Ilphonic. That's where I knew it was one of the games. Um but, uh, yeah, Gary, are you are you intrigued by the prospect of busting some ghosts? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always intrigued by a Ghostbusters game. Um, uh, talking of Evolved, do you remember we, when that, before that came out, we was that was the E3 we was at, and it, it looked, everyone was saying, this is going to be the next big thing and all this. Yep. Um, obviously, that didn't work out, but... Um, yeah, I think I'm interested in this. Um, I'm not really an online sort of co-op guy, but it's Ghostbusters. Potentially, it sounds good. Um, so am I right in saying that the characters in it are brand new, right? Uh, um, I believe it sounds so. like that. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, yeah, so they've got... Um, it's worth noting that... So this is from the Eurogamer article. It says, it's worth noting that the Ghostbusters characters in the game are new though you'll be based in the iconic firehouse and be able to brush shoulders with both Win both Winston Zedmore and Ray Stantz, as portrayed by Ernie Hudson and Dan Aykroyd. So you've got okay. four uh, brand new Ghostbusters. Yeah, um, 
yeah i'm i'm always like i say i'm always interested in ghostbusters it's something i grew up with um my issue is the whole predator hunting ground stuff it wasn't great um but yeah we'll see um just a sort of side note yeah me and asim see the the fire station from ghostbusters in new york when we went um, saw that. Was which was hella jealous which was cool yeah um so yeah, this is is if they set a release date for this yet, or is it just sort of uh, it's coming sort of thing? I believe it's Q four. So they've they've not okay. given a, a specific so, date, but they've given a window. So yeah, um, um, Aaron, I'm hoping it's I'm hoping it's good, but yeah, yeah, no, Aaron, are you are you intra, oh, sort of are you into the uh, the asynchronous multiplayer or you? Yeah, so that's my biggest issue with this actually. The um, the whole four v one thing kind of. When it comes out and it's new and fresh, it's like, okay, cool, this is great, it's fun. But like an hour, maybe more than an hour or two, maybe after a couple of hours, a couple of sessions, it kind of gets a bit tedious. Yeah. Because you're stuck in that same cycle and there's just not enough to it to keep it going. And I'm trying to think of one that's been successful and I really can't think of one. Um, so I'd rather, I mean, if you're going to have something like Ghostbusters, I'd rather you do something like story-based. I think that's pretty much what people would want. So this is kind of uh, we'll see we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean the 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 game they did was it two thousand eight two thousand nine. They put the the Xbox three hundred and sixty PS three Ghostbusters game out, didn't they? Um, and then mm-hmm. that got remastered last year, I want to say. Um, A couple of years back, I think. Now, yeah. Yeah, so you can like play that, and I I really enjoyed that, that. Like I thought it was yeah. a I thought it was a decent yeah, was little. Really well, at the time, it was Ghostbusters 3. I think it's yes. no longer considered canon, although it is canon in the IDW graphic novels I'm pointing, because I've got them on my shelf here. <laughs> it is canon in those, and there's quite a few references back to the game in those. Okay. But as far as the films go, it goes to then Afterlife. Fair enough. But, uh, but no, I I'm, the game, yeah. I, I, I will always play a Ghostbusters game because I am a child at heart and I did love Ghostbusters as a kid. So mm. hopefully, you know, this is more, this is more kind of polished than, than Predator Hunting Grounds was. Cause uh, yeah, I, I did not enjoy mm. that game at all. Um, but we shall move on. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, six small stories here, so we'll we'll touch Quick on these. Quick fire stories. Pew, pew, Quick pew. fire stories. Uh, first one is that there is a PS5 firmware update that is out today, as we record. Um, this might have actually gained or sort of grown some legs since we initially set the agenda down for the podcast. Um, nothing major in here, but the big thing is that in the announcement sony included a little little snippet to say yes all right finally ben shut up we're putting vrr in the update uh, but it will be in, it'll be down in a couple of months so uh, are we excited by by firmware updates uh, aaron <laughs> I mean, I don't have a TV that will take advantage of a VR no. right now, but <laughs> it's something that should be there. Like, I don't understand why it wasn't on launch. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, what's the other thing? They added parties or something? So it's private um, and public parties that you can join. Yeah. I actually didn't realize that wasn't there from the jump with Discord around. I mean, who really uses yeah. <laughs> parties on the actual yeah. console? Um, you on? Sorry. Yeah. No, I don't. That's a small one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think like the, obviously they they they're kind of they're moving slowly toward full Discord integration at some point. So yeah, yeah, hopefully you know that's that's sort of down the pipe. Uh, Gary, are you are you getting hyped for firmware? Like <laughs> this cracked me up because like they've sort of announced oh this new firmware and then it's basically just a normal one until two months later when the actual thing that everyone wants comes. Yep. Um, everyone with an expensive telly yeah pretty much um yeah i i just i've never really even like i don't think i've ever sat down and read like what is coming for each like firmware update i just don't i just nobody tell him nobody tell him that his ps5 is crypto mining for all of us nobody tell him Like, I just turn on my PS5, play games, and turn it <laughs> off, essentially. I don't really go into the, 
the sort of nooks and crannies of it. But yeah, for those that have got a two thousand pound plus TV, then this is exciting. But you might be waiting a while because it's not coming yet. So yeah, yeah. what's the UI updates on it? Because that's very vague. UI updates. Yeah, the UI updates are some lines on the trophies. So like the, nice. the trophy cards Classy. where they were just plain black before, now they've got like little hashed lines. If you look at our nice. um, Horizon Forbidden West trophy video, uh, it's the, the update is on there because I had the beta when I did the video for that. So of course you did. Yeah. The Switch had a the Switch had a firmware update as well. And you can make folders on folders. It but it, it's not <laughs> folders, though, is it? It's folders in a very Nintendo way, from what I understand. You can basically categorize mm. it, but you can have a game in multiple categories as well. So you can actually categorize games more than once, which is interesting. Are you gonna anyway, have a what folder? else happened Ew. with the PS5 firmware, Ben? Are you, are you going to have a folder on your Switch called Andy Games, and it's just everything? I have, but it's not called Andy <laughs> Games. Um, but no, apparently, yeah, that there has been uh, sort of a little bit of breaking news on this. Um it probably won't be breaking news by the time you hear this. In fact, it will probably be all broken news. It will, it will be all <laughs> over. Um, but uh, yeah, apparently people were getting issues logging into uh, games that require PS Plus, so people mm. couldn't play Elden Ring. So Andy was very pleased that he had it on Xbox. Um, I mean, I, I the Xbox version was broken on launch day for online. So you know, I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm probably not going to go back to Elden Ring until the VRR update comes out. Because that okay. game's performance is still dog shit. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, only dropping the bollock quite frequently. Yeah, the VR, it, it seems to be a bit mm. of a rough week for Sony. Like, you know, um, I, people weren't able to get into games that required PS Plus, and then obviously the Gran Turismo stuff. I mean, has anybody had any attempt to get onto stuff today and had any problems? I literally had tea after together. I finished work and then came on to talk to you lot, so, you know, <laughs> I've not even touched a console today. Fair enough. <laughs> Gary, you been all right? Yeah, I, to be honest, I haven't even tested it, but, um, yeah, I, I assume that it's not everyone having issues, it's just sort yeah, of here it's... and there people having issues, I'd imagine, but... It seems to be a bit... But strange. yes, like Andy said, Sony are really, like, there's there's got to be one more, right? It happens in three, so something will happen tomorrow big like i don't know like um Tom God Holland been confirmed there. to be kratos mm. <laughs> do we get free games if there's another sony bad like they did that last time they had a, a, a uh, yeah. i mean that that was a that, games. that wasn't that was a, a big bad i say that a wasn't bad. a bad that mm. was a bad, bad. <laughs> that, was the fuck. that is bad it's uh aaron have, have you as your gran turismo uh, uh as your gran turismo Seems to be working fine. I jumped on and did a lap of something because Ariel challenged me to. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's working fine. <laughs> That's what we want. It seems, it's, it's all good. Good stuff. <laughs> uh, next game. Oh, next thing that we're talking about. Uh, there is a new horror game from Supermassive, and it is not part of the series that they've been doing Bandai Namco, whose name escapes me. Book of yeah. No, it was like Man of Medan. Like Man from Medan and um, stuff. The, uh, it was a saga that they did, and I should have researched this beforehand. But Dark Pictures. The Dark Pictures, yes, that's the one. It's Good not job part I can the, Google. <laughs> it's not part of the Dark Pictures uh, saga. This is coming from, uh, I believe it's coming from 2K. And it's it is, called yeah. The Quarry. Did we see the trailer? And mm. what did we think, Gary? Yeah, um... It looks good. Um, uh, what was that game on the PS4 that they did? Uh, Until Dawn. Um, yeah, I love that. I thought that was really good. Um, very story-driven, obviously. That's what they do. Um, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. I was expecting to sort of play it like other games that they did, but I never did. Um, so I'm excited for this year. Um, hopefully it's as good as as Until Dawn, because I thought Until Dawn was very underrated. I think a lot of people hated on that because it was very story-driven, linear. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. And yeah, so it's 2K obviously involved, so it should be polished, hopefully. Um, yeah, launching, yeah. On, uh, launching on June the 10th, and the cast includes... Good uh, cast. The cast yeah. includes mm. 
WCW champion or former WCW champion David Arquette. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, it's got David Arquette, Lance Henriksen, Ted Raimi, who's of course Sam Raimi's brother and was in loads of horror films, Lynn Shea, who was in the... Elm Street. Um, she was in Nightmare Before Elm Street, but she was in the... Um, not The Conjuring, what's the other one? Um... <laughs> no idea. Yeah, uh, she's I the psychic in um, Insidious. Oh, okay. It's in kind the of... Insidious mm. films, yeah. So she's in those. And Justice Smith, who was in the um, Detective Pikachu film. Fair enough. It's got Ooh. Ariel Winter in it as well, who was in uh, Modern Family. Ah. So, yeah. And Ethan Supley, um, who was in a lot everything. of... Um, Every everything film that we that... watched as a teenager. Every Everything that um, Kevin Smith did, basically. Yeah. But no, yeah. I mean, it, it, this seems interesting. Aaron, are you, are you a horror man? I probably will give this a pass, but I'm very <laughs> curious as the because it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a more story driven kind of game, right? Yeah, is that is that correct? Um, yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm very very curious why there's a movie mode going to be added where what you do you do less than you already are doing. Like, <laughs> are, we, are we playing games at this point? I don't really understand what's going on here. Why does he need a movie mode? <laughs> Yeah, so, so, I guess um, it's like the story, isn't it? I say, so yeah, the, the movie here. Just kind of enjoy the story, yeah. It says here, movie mode is uh, it will let players enjoy the quarry as a binge worthy cinematic thriller. Select how you want the story to unfold, kick back and munch on some popcorn between all the screams. I thought that was already the uh, idea of the game. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm there's just an even fewer button prompts. <laughs> yeah, I'm reading the Wikipedia page and it says it, it disables gameplay elements like button mashing and quick time events and aiming and shooting. So I guess it's like the Netflix choose your own adventure sort of films. Okay, in that, that could be quite where interesting. Where you're literally making decisions as to how the narrative goes. Fair mm. enough. I mean, Andy, did you uh, did you get into Until Dawn? I did get into, into Until Dawn, but I actually stopped playing it on my PS4 because the performance was quite horrible. Um, and I keep meaning to pick it back up again on PS5 um, and start again. As I say, there's a very um, interesting last... video that shows uh, just how well it runs on the PS5. Um, I'm I know, trying to think I where know. you can what find channels, it. What channel's that on? <laughs> yeah, mm. it runs at a solid 60. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so I keep meaning to get um, get playing and uh, get get back onto that. Um, the last thing I remember doing was inadvertently killing Freddie Mercury in it. So. Um... <laughs> Because yeah. I couldn't make a decision quick enough, and he was the one that uh, he was another one that bit the dust. Fair enough. Um, so um, while we're on the subject of, um, I say we're on the subject of PlayStation, we've skipped a story, but uh, PlayStation have acquired uh, Jade Raymond's new studio, Haven Studios. Um, do we think Jade Raymond might stay at a studio long enough to see a video game get released? <laughs> <laughs> She, I mean, did she not stay yeah. for the original uh, Assassin's Creed? So that's the yeah. thing. She she was there for Assassin's Creed, and then she has yet to see a release at one of her studios mm. ever it's, since. She's been at eighty two studios after that. Uh. <laughs> I mean, one of them was Stadia, so you got to give us some yeah credit for getting at that at least. No, I think no. this uh, this acquisition by Sony. I think it's more of a acquiring talent. Mm -hmm. rather than the studio because obviously the studio hasn't i believe released a game right no, um, so i think it so was I think... I think it was founded um either last year or year before potentially a couple of years ago and it was like i think when it got announced that they were founding the studio it was founded with some money from sony so this is got this is yeah. kind of like just tying the knot on not like tying the bow on the top and saying oh you're ours now yeah yeah, so I think yeah, that I think obviously, <laughs> obviously they're acquiring it obviously protect for potential game releases, but I think at the same time it's also the talent side of it which makes sense. So, mm. but we shall see what what happens with them. Yeah, um, and Aaron, are you interested in a new IP? I'm always interested in new IPs. They just need to tell me what it is, you know. <laughs> Announce it. <laughs> Absolutely. Let us know what you're working on. Absolutely. Um, but it, it did say that it was a multiplayer focused IP. So whether this is going to be a games as service job or Andy's crying oh, in the no. corner. Um, I just. There's not enough time in a week, surely, to play all these games as a service titles that they keep 
shitting out. That's why no, they want you to play yeah. one and give them all your money. Ah, oh, dear. We're anyway. going to get to a point where there is literally a game for every person in the world to play continuously. Yeah. Just a, a game as a service title for every single individual in the world. And you'll be where left with it us. has its own games as a service title. So you'll be left with Pong. Pong is a service, isn't it? Yeah, it's older <laughs> than I am, so. I think once these companies realise that the, once certain things are established, like long-staying like games as a service games, I think the rest will just fall away. To be fair, yeah. I think it's a bit. It will be a bit like a uh, Blizzard and WoW. Once somebody nails it and that's the thing, mm. everybody else will try and realise this is a waste of money, and then they'll just go back to making normal games. Oh, you, we're we're kind of seeing it already, aren't we? Like we're kind of seeing it with uh, like was it Babylon's Fall the other week that came out and like had no players at launch and then it's like oh this is a games as a server oh <laughs> and like you know uh, obviously the Avengers as well that kind of came and Ugh. that failed and it's like if you can't make a successful thing out of the fucking Avengers you've got a bit of an issue. But uh, yeah. anyway, um, there's a couple of a smaller ones. I'm probably going to skip a couple here. But the um, the last two that we're going to talk about, um, I don't really know whether to to, to bring this up because we've only got a short amount of time, and I, I just want to see how long Andy is going to scream for. Um, Ocarina of Time has gotten a PC port, um, unofficial, obviously it's fan made, mm -hmm. and I think they've managed to get round legalities here by saying oh it's everything in the game is fan made so it's it's not um you know that they're not ripping off assets they're kind of making their own is that a thing that can't be a thing that, that can't, can't be real i had a look. quick look at the video and that's like yeah. me hand tracing over aladdin um and releasing it and saying <laughs> yeah. okay it's a brand new film i drew all of the stuff myself <laughs> That can't be a thing. No way that's a thing. This is going to get eliminated quick. And we all know how Nintendo are. This is not going to survive. I can't believe it. <laughs> um, Nintendo currently currently uh, sending in the troops. <laughs> okay, just, just looking <laughs> a bit further hilarious. into it. Um, the the fan-made PC version is powered by a piece of software called Ship of Harkinian. Um, the software requires users to input their own legally sourced N64 ROM. Um, after which it will extract the game's yeah. assets and spit out a native PC version. Wait, but I thought all the assets were <laughs> made I, by them. I read, <laughs> I read somewhere. Piracy. Yeah, I, I read somewhere that um, uh, I, I misread it here. Basically, yeah. So it says, the creators hope that this separation from Nintendo's owned assets will help shield it from any potential legal ramifications. Reverse engineering projects such as this are technically made legal. There you go. Because the fans involved did not use any leaked content or copyrighted assets, so yeah. But isn't like the character of Link copyrighted though? So surely I don't know. I'm not a legal expert. Ah, it's just... ah I see. I see. I see. I think what what they're saying is they're not distributing the assets yeah. with the game. Okay. They're distributing the engine and everything that powers the game. But you need a le a, a copy of the game. Hmm. to rip the assets out of that then get shoved into the um the game when you play it so hmm. all they're doing is distributing the pc source code for it not the assets that that make it look pretty when it's running oh okay yeah they're, they're just providing the gun you know you've got to buy the ammo yeah that's what it is so uh is this is this something that we're gonna we're gonna check out i mean i saw it running on a steam deck and i immediately thought of andy I'm I'm very controversial in that I don't have a strong opinion of Ocarina of Time. Lots of people hold it up to be one of the greatest games ever made. Oh, I no! Thought okay. <laughs> I thought it was okay. Oh, no! Out. <laughs> I didn't. I yeah. didn't dislike it. I really. I don't know. Maybe I came to it very late. I never played it on the N64. I first played it on my GameCube when I got the Legend of Zelda um, collection. And at that point, I'd already played like Link's Awakening, Link to the Past um, on my Game Boy, um, uh, Wind Waker on my GameCube. Um, so you, you had me into you had me into Wind Waker. I was like, okay, 
Those those other games are up, up there with Ocarina of Time. Then you said Wind Waker, and I was like, uh... no, 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 no. Wind Waker. You mean... I think Wind Waker. Wind Waker. I obsessed over for a, a long time. Um, that world, and then I came to play Ocarina, and I was like, I can see, I can see the historical merit that it has, but playing it after coming off Wind Waker, it was just fine to me. But had I played it in the time of the N sixty four, I might have had a different opinion. Uh, I'd argue that, there's more content in Ocarina of Time than there is in Wind Waker. Wind Waker feels like half a game. Not, I'm not saying Wind Waker is bad, but it was rushed, and it feels like half a game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say this. Um, Link's Awakening is the best Zelda. Link's Awakening is the best Zelda. I agree with you. Yeah, I'm, I agree. Yeah. And the remake... I don't agree, but I respect the opinion. <laughs> <laughs> the remake that they did was actually surprisingly brilliant on the Switch. Apart it from it run brilliant. like shit on oh, the yeah, Switch. Oh yeah, it's like 60 frames a second, 60 frames a second inside, mm. 30 frames a second outside, and there was no... like It, it was, was rough. Yeah, like the, the V-Sync on it was horrible, so like you either had 60 or 30, there was no in-between. Um, Wasn't yeah. the problem mm. that they loaded the overworld in in one go? And the switch just yeah. crumpled under Possibly. the pressure of it. <laughs> it was way, brutal in places. Yeah, yeah, still one of my favorite games of all time. Absolutely yeah. loved it. Yeah, it's a great game. I've had very fond memories of playing that on my Game Boy on holiday in Norway. There you go. So there you go. Very um, specific memories. And finally, <laughs> to wrap up, why is this a thing? Oh no. Microsoft. That's exactly the reaction I had when I saw this story. <laughs> Microsoft have revealed that they're giving away a custom Series S <laughs> with a a golden ring around the uh, um, the vent uh, to celebrate the launch of Sonic the Hedgehog two. But the controllers what? are furry. <laughs> Why? Imagine the smell. <laughs> oh, uh, the smell. Imagine <laughs> them. After like a month of using that controller, it's just just that's going to be disgusting. <laughs> oh. So it was. I mean, my kid had a mate round tonight, and they were playing the Switch, and it came away. One of my Joy Cons came away with Dorito gunk all over it, which <laughs> I was not happy with. Imagine <laughs> a fair controller with the filth. I... The filth. I mean. There was a, a tweet, I think it was from Jordan from uh, VGC and Overload earlier on, and he basically said, can you imagine if this gets traded into a CEX? Uh, oh. And is sitting on <laughs> that sure shelf. sure it'd be sentient at that point. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You know, they'll turn, they'll turn away and it'll scuttle off to, to, to hide in amongst all of the uh, millions of copies of FIFA that they've had. <laughs> Sold two. That yeah, that's just. It doesn't. It doesn't look functional. No. Like it doesn't look like you. Like you have trouble hitting the 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 uh, face buttons and stuff. Like, yeah, like mm. the the the, the, the D pad looks like it's been stuck on the top of the fur. <laughs> just it. It doesn't it's look like a Furby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it's horrendous. I don't know why anybody would want it, but I kind of want it. It's like no, a you don't. Thing, then you right? don't. Just to just to put on a shelf and say, look at how weird it is. Mm. Like put it in a box I get so that. I never touch it and say, look at how weird this shit is. Like oh. It could become a collector's <laughs> item. How how rare are these gonna be? I think there's only <laughs> I think there's only one. There's one red <clears throat> one and one blue one, isn't there? Because it's yeah, Sonic so and Knuckles. Fans yeah. can uh, fans can enter two sweepstakes for a chance to win the exclusive custom Xbox Series S and both the Sonic Blue and Red Knuckles wireless controllers. So uh, can enter two sweepstakes. So I'm presuming there's two, like there's two mm. full sets. Um, this is this is up there with the PS3's boomerang controller for me. <laughs> um, just like. I mean, it's actually worse to be fair. We've played, well, we've praised Microsoft for their controllers. Like their mm. their range of controllers is absolutely stellar, and obviously they've got the uh, the design labs <laughs> as well, so you can like fully customize it. But this is just no. 
I was going to say on the same day that they on the same day they announced this though they announced those gorgeous new pastel colours for the design. Yeah, they're controls, beautiful, didn't they? Mm. Which look mm. absolutely tasty. Um, yeah. But this is up there with the Resident Evil chainsaw controller for absolute <laughs> impracticality, isn't it? This I is mean, insane. If you if you start adding fur onto things that you need to hold. Oh, all right. But, um, <laughs> no comment. All right. Well, 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 we're a gerb. Electronics. That you need to... <laughs> Damn. Oh dear. But on that note, I think it's probably uh, probably a good time to walk away from the podcast for the week. Um, yeah, right, that's this... it. Let's stop video games for a bit, shall we? Yep. Video games are cancelled now. Sonic put some furry controllers out. Videos get video games are cancelled. Um, the only thing is, the actual console doesn't look too shoddy, but mm. it's just those controllers. Anyway. Imagine if that was furry as well. Oh, God. It looked like something that fell off the honey monster. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, God. The furry console. Don't get my idea. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that will do us for the Next Gen Basecast for the week. Um, thank you for joining me, uh, Andy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That's all right. Uh, Andy was in at the fourth rotating chair for the week. We didn't make him rotate this week. Uh, Gary as uh, Gary and Aaron, as always, thank you. For always being a pleasure, sir. Thank you for being here. And uh, make sure that you get subscribed to the podcast, get subscribed to uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, Twitter is Next Gen Base. Facebook is Next Gen Base. Instagram is Next Gen Base. Underscore. Uh, um, and uh, I think if we find out whoever stolen that username, <laughs> the, curse the username upon isn't them. taken. The username isn't taken. If you go to like Instagram Next Gen Base, it's not. It doesn't exist. It's a weird situation. How can we can get that anyway? That's a conversation to take offline. Indeed. Anyway, we will see you guys <laughs> next week for another base cast and it's episode 200 will we do something special probably not we should we should but we won't let's get everyone on it'll be chaos <laughs> <laughs> just a massive zoom call yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too let's do it live okay i'm going bye bye <laughs> bye, bye.